just dusting off the microphone because we're back. As ever, the following podcast contains language and themes that some people may find offensive. We talk about time travel and pigeon penis. Sort of. Enjoy! Hello and welcome to That Was The Week That Was, Was It? The podcast with Nout taken out, apart from the bits that didn't work. Uh, I'm Alex Sivright and joining me for this episode is Emmy Weber. Hello. You're all right. I'm all right. I said I said I said I wasn't going to ask if you were all right because it's automatic. And yeah, I, I told you I would. Yeah, I'm terrible. Should we just crack well, on? Well, you didn't ask what I got up to, which is yes, yeah, normally. Yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah. So our guest for this episode is an impressionist and author who, in my personal opinion, is an icon of the '80s. I've got to say it, and it's true. It's Steve Nallen. Hello, Steve. Hello. Hello, I'm here in High Barnet. Are you? In North London, that's where I oh, am. Wonderful, a wonderful place to be, I think. Can I tell you a quick a quick anecdote about yeah. where I live? I live in a little terraced house. Yes. And when I first moved in, I had quite a posh lady who lived that side. And she came up to me one day in the street and she said, um, she said, you, you, you live alone, don't you? I said, yes. Yeah, we chatted, you know, but we... I chatted. She said, you live alone? I said, well, yes, but why do you ask? She said, well, it's just that we we keep hearing all these voices <laughs> and we never see anyone coming in and out. <laughs> so I told her what I did for a living. She didn't know anything about me, so I told her what I did. And she said, um, oh, how very interesting. Now, these voices of yours, they don't affect your mental health in oh. any way. All right. So right. that was my... That yes. was my uh, welcome to the street. But I practice a lot. So in those days, which is over 10 years ago, I don't, I don't really perform much anymore. But um, So, yeah, they were hearing me practicing voices. Oh, and wow. I, I, was... mean, do you, I mean, you say you don't perform Come in, Adam. with the voices. Oh, but do, do you... Oh, there, there he is. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> this is Adam, who's, who is an actor from uh, Cornwall. And oh, yeah. um, he's been working on things like, we're allowed to say, The Crown and um, what's the other one you did? Bridgerton. Oh, uh, Bridgerton. Oh. And, Was that at um, Hampton Court, did you? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, he's, he's been staying here in this room because it's normally a bed, is that? Uh, nice. But he's, 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 he's going off to stay somewhere else now to look after a cat for a week. Okay. Uh, well, that's because... not quite as glamorous, is it, as Bridgerton? Well, I, it, 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 it's it, anyway. It, 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 I don't think he's allowed to tell you what's going on. So okay. um, fair enough. Yeah. You know, NDA. That's, that's, everything's NDAs. No dis. That's fair enough. No I disclosure mean, I, agreement or something like that. I do. I do edit this podcast to. A, a, All right. A okay. Just in case we reveal the plot time. of the next series. Yeah. So get everything. Yeah. Okay. I, I'll speak to you anon. Ta-da. So yeah, you said that. Um, obviously, you, you you don't perform the voices anymore. But do you still have that? urge to practice voices you know in, in, i still in do sometimes um and uh the, I, I next door i've got a little studio and I've, I've been intending to do some audio books um so when you're working vocally it's like a muscle it's like a runner mm. you you particularly at my age i'm now 61 so you can't just do it anymore you've actually got to prepare otherwise yes. you'll damage your voice of so, uh, and I did damage my voice about 20, uh, 15 years ago. And um, it, it, uh, the, the lady I went to who looked after the opera singer, um, Leslie um, Garrett. Leslie Garrett, yeah. Yes. And in fact, I, I Leslie, it's, a, it's not a secret, is this? Because uh, there is now the Leslie Garrett um, room where Leslie Garrett kindly donated. Uh, a thing that goes down your throat. Oh, um, uh, a, a camera. She had, they put a camera up your nose, wow. and then it goes down your throat. And so the lady, she said, you've got the slight problem with with one of your vocal folds. That the, the folds look like that. She said, Does, this one isn't moving the same way as this one. Um, and she said, it's fine. It'll get fixed. But these are the exercises you. Should, I won't bore you with it, but these are the exercises you do. Mm. And then she said to me, um, because you're an impressionist. Would you mind us taking some pictures, some of your vocal cords, yeah. their folds, not cords, as I said, vocal folds, which I we would like to use at lectures? So I said, yeah, of course, yeah, no problem. 
So um, I put, they put it down and they, I, they said, can you do some voices? So I, I said, I'll do some high ones and some low ones. So I did, um, I've been talking all day, so I can't get that low. Um, but I did Alan Rickman. Okay. Where are my detonators? <laughs> and shoot the glass. <laughs> and so I, oh, that's really interesting. So I said, I'll try a high voice. So I did Julie Andrews. Oh. Um, feed the birds, tarpons. And they said, it's really fascinating what's, you know, what your vo vocal cords are doing when you do something low and, and something high. And what's what's an unusual voice? And I said, well, Anne Widdicombe is one of the most unusual voices. Uh, so I saw them doing Anne Widdicombe. And they said, stop, 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 stop. I said, what's wrong? They said, you, it's, gone, it's gone into your stomach. She's what? eaten the thing. <laughs> oh. And the oh microphone. She said, pull it out, pull it out. <laughs> That's worth a lot of money. <laughs> um, yeah. And I don't know how much... Let it go. And actually, you know, but she donated this, and there's a little pack wow. to a little sign saying that Leslie Garrett. And um, so, and I, and they taught me a lot about, you know, the larynx. I didn't know much about it. Um, and they said, no, no, you, you, you got to steam, which basically means, you know, you get put your head on top of a kettle every day as yeah. much as you can, just get as much water in to your system. Uh, don't drink coffee. Don't do this. Don't know. Um, and, uh, you'll be fine. But, um, and I, I, the, what ha had, what had happened was I was working on family guy voices. I decided to do some family guy voices, mm. which is very popular at the time. And, uh, most of them are quite straightforward. Um, you know, there's, um, a uh, Stuart is like that, that a very Stuart voice, very Stuart. Not, most people can do it. Done, not a difficult voice to do. Um, and then there's Herbert, I think he's called Herbert, who's this strange yeah. older man <laughs> who, yeah. who sounds very oddly like David in the um, uh, 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 you get You get the, you know, that slightly pitchy thing. Anyway, um, but the one I really was struggling with was the son called Chris. Oh, uh, yes. Now, Chris is, um, it, 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 it's the same voice, essentially, uh, dynamically as... Uh, Johnny Vegas, mm -hmm. and it's it's strangulated. Yes. So most voices are rhythmical. Um, so, for example, uh, John Gielgud is, oh, to be or not to be, that is a question, whether it is nobler. And, you know, and then yeah. uh, other voices like Ian McKellen is more puncher. Uh, to be or not to be, that is a question, whether it is nobler in the mind. Um, and but Chris is a very rare sort, and he's he's like Johnny Vegas, and Johnny Vegas is strangulated. It's <laughs> like doing with that, and it's very bad for your voice. Yes. So, uh, and I'd been working on Chris, which is very similar, and and I got it close, and I got became obsessive about it, and I did Chris for about forty five minutes, and it was mm. way way too long. Yeah, the thing about Chris's voice is because um, Seth Green. Um, performs it it's it's actually his version of buffalo bill from silence of the lambs ah right okay i met that makes sense i was got the kind of in, inward kind of, i can't do i can't do it personally but it's like imagine the like put the lotion in the basket it's, 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 and, and, and uh, fascinatingly here's a, a bit of useless information um let me get this right let me get this right what has daffy duck got in common with Richard the Third, oh. and the act. The point is, Mel Blanc based Daffy Duck on the same actor producer that Laurence Olivier based his Richard the Third on. Oh my goodness! Oh, okay. he, he, come up, he was one of the most unpleasant men uh, in the history of theatre and uh, and stuff. And both of them knew him, and and they'd taken different angles of the voice and it stretched mm. it, and so on. So the, the history of voices is interesting. With, um, for example, Homer Simpson is yeah. based on Walter Matthau, yes, uh, who was in all those films with Jack Lemmon. And actually, if you watch the early um, Homer Simpson ones, you can hear that's what he's doing now. Yeah, I think what happened over the years. 
um, maybe even the first few episodes. Oh, Miss Simpson, he became less like, you know, he be, he became less like what a matter and he took on his own and read me, you know, he took his own in your voice. And, oh, yes, me, me, yeah, yeah, uh, much, <laughs> much, um, uh, so uh, the voices do develop, as it were. Yeah. But you, but one of the tricks is you, is actually to begin with somebody else and then slowly let it develop. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so and, that's and one I'm, of the tricks you, it's, you do. It's a, it's a good way of getting a character, isn't it? If, if yeah. you just try and do an, an, an impersonation, like a bad impersonation, I guess. Of, of, well, um, then it becomes its own character when you, it, when you add yeah. to it. Anyway, I damaged my voice, and um, then I had to be, you know, very careful from then on. Of course, um, of course. And, and warm up, you know. Yeah. So we haven't really started yet, have we? Well, we, we haven't, but the box, the this, this podcast the does trivia that, you know. of the week, as it were. Yeah, it it does that. This podcast. That's why I, when you said how long does it last, I say normally an hour, but it never <laughs> does. Um, but I, I want to touch briefly on spitting image while we got you talking about that because obviously I've got you on. Why would I not? And it's something that when um, I was far too young for it, but I never missed an episode. Sunday evening, I was I was watching it in my bedroom. I was like, it must have been about. Oh you know, wow. Yeah, I'm I'm full, I'm like 43 now, so I mean that kind of gives you an, an idea. Well, you, um, you, you, and right, okay, I'm trying to work out the maths of that, but yeah, it's uh, you uh, yeah. in ten or something. 10? Far too young, yeah, far too young, but yeah. Um, but I mean, your voice in particular, when when you you see how many characters you voiced, um. I just, I just want to thank you because it's, it's, <laughs> because I've got such good memory. Well, good to say, I do. Let me finish. It's an important point. I do hope that Margaret Thatcher didn't give you nightmares. That you know, would be very, very sad if that you, happened. I, I, want to, I want to ask you about that because um, her puppet evolved quite a lot. I mean, how many different versions was? There? I don't know how many different versions. Uh, I, 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 the, the, it, the, the first one, I think they basically did do one a series, and that was mm. partly because she was the most used, so it, it, it physically fell apart. Okay. Uh, and then she evolved, um, and I think they basically commissioned and uh, not commissioned because they, they, they were the people. Um, they, they essentially made a new one every year. Yeah. Um, there was one in particular. The, the it was a later one, the smiling one. Right, that kind of, oh, and the fate just, that gave me nightmares. Oh, then, it did I give mean, you nightmares. I'm I, was, I, was a bit, I was a bit older then, <laughs> you know. Right. And just, uh, that it's, was quite it, it's a little bit, what what uh, what happened with the voice with for Thatcher was that um, in the very early program, I just basically tried to do a, a, a sort of copy of her, mm. um, and uh, but we started talking because the series, the early series didn't work. So the very first episode was very much like that, and uh, and 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 I was very nervous it was for the most first time in television. I didn't really know, you know, how it all worked. Mm -hmm. And we started chatting, and John Lloyd said, "It's great impression, very good, but it really needs to sound a little bit more like what the puppet looks like." Uh, um, um, and I said, "Oh, I see." So. Um, what if I added to that that voice the way she sounds in Parliament? He said because television television wasn't pal uh, televised in those days. Mm. It was they had radio recordings, but they had no no yeah. telly. So he said, well, what would that sound like if you? I said I won't do it as she does it in Parliament, but I'll I'll add, I'll add that element into the voice. Shall, what about that? Uh, he said, well, yeah, that's great. So I'll do it in Parliament. So this is her parliamentary voice. The right honourable gentleman does not understand the nature of fiscal policy. He does not understand the nature of foreign affairs and diplomacy. <laughs> and, and so, and, and, and therefore what I did was I took that original voice and just added that little bit extra in it. Oh, oh, Douglas, will you stop being, oh, Jeffrey. And that's not what she sounded like. But they said, that is what we wanted. Because now it sounds like the puppet looks right. It doesn't sound like her. It's mm. clearly her. And mm. the nicest compliment I got was from Peter and Roger, um, Flock and Law. And they said, we don't think of you as an impressionist. We think of you as a caricaturist of the voice, mm. uh, which I thought was a really nice thing to say. Yeah, isn't it? 
Now, I mean, you, and also, you, we will get onto the week. We will get onto the week, but <laughs> um, it's to other characters as well. They, I mean, I can't say characters, but people. They, they other, are people. They are people, but they're <laughs> characters to me, you know? Uh, like, you know, uh, your Bruce Forsyth, your. Um, well, Bruce, I mean, Bruce Forsyth really <laughs> is just basically an impersonation. Yes. Because yes. I didn't really. Uh, when I do Bruce Forsyth, I used to. And I hardly said a word. So you can't do that because, you know, it just sounds like it's a mistake. So, and we did that thing with Bruce Forsyth of. It's turning the catchphrase the wrong way around. Yes, I've had yes. a very nice day today. Today, I've had a very, very nice day. I mean, I think Tyson's <laughs> where he wouldn't actually, he would have a conversation where um, uh, I've just had a salmon quiche for my tea, a salmon quiche for my tea. <laughs> Which, I've had a salmon okay. quiche for my tea. And you pair that with the look of the puppet. As well, yeah, uh, just, and it's just, it's just, oh, so funny. So I tell you funny. one thing about, um, uh, I, I, th- th- it's slightly the wrong way around, but um, I once had to go in. Uh, I also did David Frost, who I knew as well. There's a story there, um, and we were. Uh, I went in and I did David Frost, and and um, and sometimes impressions mix up with each other, and um, I went in and said hello. Good evening, and oh my god, I've turned into Bruce Forsyth. <laughs> because there was a hello, hello, good evening, and it's there. You can see that it's a similar, similar. What happened with, with um, bless him, uh, David Frost, uh, they auctioned off the David Frost puppet, mm. and the presenter of the auction um, st- interviewed. You know the, uh, the 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 me and the puppet, and it, the interviewer kept putting the microphone underneath the puppet. <laughs> me. And guess who the auctioner was? Was David Frost himself? Oh wow! Well, wow! Well. <laughs> and I I kept saying, uh, David, you know, it's just my mouth that's speaking, not the puppet. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. And you just yes. goes, sorry, who are you? <laughs> and he was very good about it. I mean, he'd been impersonated oh, so God. many times over the years. I mean, even the name of this podcast is a homage, as you know. You know, that was the week that was, was it? It's well, just... that, no, I was going to say you, you, you're going back to what what used to be called TW3. That was the week that was. Yeah. Um, Here's a lovely story about David Frost. Uh, um, it's a, it's an old story, but so he goes he goes to um, he goes to buy a book, and at, uh, uh, in some point, and, and no, I think he, 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 he whatever he's buying might have been a very expensive item, as opposed to a book. Um, and um, they said, "Oh, Mister Frost, we do think you're very good. We think you're really good. We love all your interviews on the television in the morning." And um, uh, yes, of course you can pay by check, Mister Frost. We'd be very happy to accept it. And then she went onto the computer and she said, "Mister Frost, have you got any means of identification?" <laughs> <laughs> but the sister wouldn't allow, you know, that's, it that's to the be the real dear Frost. There's one occasion where you probably could go, "You don't you know who I am?" That's probably the, when you could probably. Well, that's one yeah, exactly. Now that that is exactly right. That is the yeah. one occasion where don't you? Well, she did. You do know who I am, <laughs> but the system won't allow it, and I accept that. So he yes. must have paid some other way. I'm sure he did. Yeah. It was good fun. I I liked. I I it was it was you know he was he was nice guy to chat to and work with. Well, he's a legend, wasn't he? He really was. Right. So that's the intro done. Right. Yep. <laughs> Let's get on with the week. <laughs> uh, we start with Monday. Monday, what was that like for you? Um, 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 well, the whole week's been odd because I've got an infestation of moths, oh. uh, which I had years ago, um, and it, they've come back. And um, so you can't, not, oddly enough, they're not in here, um, but, but they're elsewhere. So I'm, I haven't found where they live yet. Mm. So this previous time it happened, I traced it to a sheep's skin, uh, which was sort of in the clue um, as to where they live. And I I thought, and I found that, and actually the sheepskin rug had been eaten. And, oh, and I lifted the sheep, and it was an entire colony of these moths. Yeah. So at the moment, I'm, I'm, I feel a little bit unpleasant because 
I see them about, I see about three or four on a morning on the wall and I get my, I don't like killing things. So that I am having to, because they're eating my shirts and things. So at the moment, the the whole house is, it's got dead moths <laughs> everywhere, but I've got to find the colony before I wipe them off the wall. So, um, and, and I started hoovering the carpet um, and there weren't any moths. So, you know, I, I don't know where there were any moths. So then it, you know, full of rubbish, you know, full of the, so I emptied the rubbish and then there was thousands of little fluttering things coming out the bin. Oh. Uh, tiny, oh. tiny little moths were coming out of the bin. So oh, they, they were somewhere in the carpet. And I've still got some more carpet too. Uh, that, so that's a very boring thing. But it's, that, it, it, it's not really that boring in the sense that it does, it does question this thing of I genuinely don't like um, harming things and killing no. things. No. I did meet a lady once, a puppeteer on, on um, uh, I did the Muppet, one of the Muppet things. I was an extra in Muppets. I had no big part. And I worked on Muppet Treasure Island. And I remember talking to this, this puppeteer and, and she said, um, oh, I can't kill anything. And uh, uh, she said, w currently we've got dry rot in the house. I said, you've got, to get, you've got to treat dry rot. She said, well, no, it's a living creature. Oh, so wow. we then had this level of, of uh, what wow. willingness are you to... So I don't like... Um, and it reminded me then of, of Boris Johnson. Uh, and I say that because I worked with um, uh, an actor called Will, uh, Will Barton, who played Boris Johnson in the play when I was playing Mrs. Thatcher. Mm -hmm. And um, he was brilliant, actually, as Boris Johnson. And he's one of those actors who worked a lot. But when he didn't work, he was a, a mothball salesman. Oh, so okay. um, last time, I, not this time around, but I rang him up last time around. Um, so imagine, you, you know, imagine ringing up I don't do Boris Johnson, but <laughs> imagine ringing up Boris Johnson and asking for advice about mothballs. So anyway, that's my that that was my Monday. Well, about, I think you're the first impressionist I've had on that doesn't do a Boris Johnson. Um, <laughs> well, I decided not to. I, I, and I got you. I got questioned about. I, uh, there was an article in the paper, uh, Quinton Letts did a thing in the paper about um, Daily in the Daily Mail when uh, Theresa May came. And he mentioned my name and, and and basically said, "Come on, Steve, whatever, get your Theresa May." And I mm -hmm. thought, I've done all that. I don't want to go down that route again. Um, and um, I, I just, I so I stopped doing impressions on in on stage about seven years ago, um, and uh, stand up and stuff. I, I, a couple of years ago, I was asked to do Thatcher. I was very happy to do that. I was asked to do Thatcher again this year, and I said no. I've, I've I'll do it for vocally, obviously, but yeah. I'm not I'm not going to dress up again. It's you know, no. it gets silly, really. No. And the dresses don't fit as well. <laughs> <laughs> the dresses don't fit anymore. That's a problem. So that was yeah, sort of Monday. Was was, no, my, no, and the moth thing is still going on. So it's a an you know, ongoing thing. Yeah, ongoing I mean, we can, we can relate. We I think we've had, we had a moth thing at one point. I we've believe. had moths in a previous address. At the, we we get ant visitors in here every now and then. Yes, we do. And we have to um, discourage them. We well, give them some powder, don't you, ants? You give yes. them some yeah. powder. Yeah. But and they I'll eat you, it. Half past one uh, in the morning yesterday or the day before, before. Day before. I because I, I'm, I'm a writer as well, so I thought um, it's late at night. I write at night. Sometimes it helps. I'll go into the garden. It's a lovely hot like sort of time. I'll do that. I'll sit on the patio set and I'll just do some writing. I kid you not. It looked like the floor was moving. The amount of ants. The video of it is. The video horrible. is awful. It's horrible. They are they're, they're very good. They're, I always think it's an old line. It's not really my line, but somebody said, "Yes, ants. Yes, good for army, less on social services. You know, yeah. they, they're, yeah. they're, not, they're not the nicest creatures in the world. No, they're not. Um, they're not. But uh, when we first moved in here, it's a, it's a lovely little cottage. Uh, no, it's, it's, a, it's a farmhouse. It's a six hundred year old farmhouse. Yeah. Oh wow. So, yeah, um, and when we, we first sorts. we first moved in, like the second night, I think we had a flying ant infestation in the bedroom and mm. stuff. It was it isn't it was... doesn't happen just once a year. In, in, yeah. in, in it used yeah, to happen. In, it... it was a day in round about late July, August, when there's it's the flying ant day when they're all yeah. everywhere yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah. no, no. Maybe yeah, we should have a flying. Everywhere. Maybe there should be an official flying ant day, but I think possibly it's different in different parts of the. It's country. like Easter. It moves. It's, <laughs> it moves. Yeah. <laughs> 
depends on like the moon and it's yeah. the moon isn't it yeah it's, it's all about it's... the moon probably bizarrely um, it's all about the moon well i do hope you get the moths sorted out no, no, yeah, they're, 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 I, I, the, because adam has been staying here it's and i've been because this bed comes out or it's a mm. sofa that comes out as a bed I, I can actually now go under this rug and see if they're but i don't think they're coming from in here i think because they're all they're all in there so i i think it's somewhere on the carpet on the yeah uh, on the staircase somewhere yeah i mean it, it, we we there was one time we had a problem with like was it the larvae the, yeah oh yeah the that was awful. Lived and they're in the food cupboards and if you had rice or something you had to check because some of the rice grains weren't rice grains <laughs> they were, <laughs> they were larvae. Little, little wiggly wormies and oh well yeah. will stroke boris johnson said um the thing about moths, it's not – moths don't eat your um, – they don't eat your uh, jumpers. Uh, mm. it, they lay their eggs, and it's the eggs that eat the thing. So yeah. so he said if you kill um, them, um, make sure that you don't let them drop on the floor because all the gold inside is all the eggs. Mm. So oh. when you squash a, 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 a moth, uh, it leaves this pattern of gold. Yeah. But don't let them because the the eggs live on, um, uh, and and if the eggs fall on the floor, if you kill your moth, and if you if you whack it and it falls on the floor, the the the, the eggs will continue to live in the carpet. God, so that's, that's why I squash them on the wall. I'm coming across as a rather an unpleasant person squashing moths all the time. But anyway, there we are. Oh, so, if anyone's had an infestation, they'd understand. Yeah, yeah. 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 Unless Tuesday is you're killing some puppies. But let's see. <laughs> um, what, what happened on Tuesday, Steve? Well, um, Adam, yes, who, who popped in earlier, um, we, he likes films with nice people. Um, okay. So we watched a film which he hated called Marathon Man because he didn't like anybody in it. Right. He said, have you got any, any nice films? And I said, well, one of my favourite actresses is... Um, in a film called um, uh, Mrs. Miniver, and um, and she's Greer Garson, and she's also in another one, which is a lovely film called Random Harvest, and another film called um, Goodbye, Mr. Chips. And they and and this it was a man called James Hinton. He wrote all these stories, and I, I said, "Well, they're full of lovely people." And and there's, he said, "Oh yes," and then we started watching Mrs. Miniver. Now, Mrs. Miniver was a a World War Two. Propaganda movie. It was made in America, but it was essentially a propaganda movie, um, and it was it was Winston Churchill's favourite film, oh. and it really helped the war effort. Um, and it's, it's about four or five stories in it, and one of them is Dunkirk, and it's and the the, the lead um, actor is a man called Walter Pidgeon, mm. and he was the American. Uh, he was an English actor, but was always lived in America, so he was always in these. Anyway, to cut a long story short. So we began watching this Mrs. Miniver. He said, ah, I think this is the film with the penis in it. I said, what? He said, yes, this is the penis one. I said, no, it can't be. This is from 1943. There's no penises in Mrs. Miniver. Um, you know, and, and it's Winston Churchill's favourite film. It can't have a penis in it. What are you talking about? So he said, yes, it is. And, he, you know, we, we, you, you get on the... You, you press Mrs. Miniver and he said, yeah, it's this film. And um, there's a scene in it where uh, uh, Walter Pigeon, Mr. Miniver, has gone off to Dunkirk and he's taken his boat and he's brought a load of soldiers back and he's been doing it two or three times. He's been up for 48 hours. And so he goes to bed and it, it, eventually he gets up. But in that scene, I think where he wakes up or gets up, Walter Pigeon forgot to put his underpants on oh. um, underneath his pyjamas. And um, as he's getting out of the bed, his penis pops out wow. for a split second. Wow. Um, and these pictures are, of course, available on the internet. <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> it's a more? split second. <laughs> it's a split second. And because it's in black and white, you don't, but it is there. So I yeah. said, I'm not going to look at his uh, uh, penis. I just want to watch the film. But then we watched it, and then we went back to that scene, and then we froze <laughs> it, and yeah. you you can see the penis. Yeah. Was so, it on DVD? 
Uh, it's on DVD. Yes, oh, it's on DVD. Because right, right, on VHS, you don't want to wear it out. No, 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 no. no I won't. I'll only wear it out. <laughs> Good luck. I mean, that's that's quite a goof, isn't it? Um, I just love the fact that, you know, the, there's a Star Wars, isn't there, where one of the stormtroopers walks yeah. and bumps their head yeah. and, and there's wristwatches in Spartacus and all that sort yeah. of stuff. Um, I, I don't know who notices these things but somebody notices you know these things um and somebody must have been penis spotting is this habit of penis spotting uh, and, and actually he, he didn't really know who Greer Garson was and I said she's one of my favorite actresses um and she's so natural and the other one is is um Goodbye Mr Chips where she uh, plays Mr Chips wife and the other one is Random Harvest which is this film about a man who forgets who he is uh, Ronald Coleman, I think it is. Uh, and what's interesting about it is that all three films, there is no baddie. And oh, it's okay. one of the, it's, it, what's really interesting is that when you do story uh, courses and story fiction, they always tell you that the strength of your story is what they call the forces of antagonism, which is the mm. opposition. And James Hinton was a writer. He also wrote a, uh, a story called uh, Random Harvest. Um, oh, we've, I don't know Ooh. who that is. See? Ooh, see? I don't, this is a top is somebody yeah. at the, the door. door. <laughs> I don't wonder who that could be. Is he a neighbour? And if he's all right. <laughs> we have voices. I thought Adam had gone. It's, uh, it's his burrito has arrived. Oh, oh well. <laughs> I, I thought he'd. I thought he'd left actually. So anyway. So we, we'd moved on from penises, I think. Yeah, to burritos <laughs> now. Um, uh, no, but... to burritos. Yeah, that is um, so. That so, yeah. Churchill's favorite but, film well, has a penis it, in it. Forces of antagonism. So, if you read this book, yes. uh, which is one of the key books, it's a story by Robert McKee. Oh, he yeah. goes on and on about stories, uh, forces of antagonism. Hmm. And what's really interesting about James Hinton's stories, there's no enemy, there's no baddie, um, there's no forces against them. He just tells interesting stories about good people and it's i think it's really difficult excuse me it's really difficult to do to make a, a story interesting where there is mm. no no baddie as it were Maybe there are people uh, there's a in random harvest there's a a love interest that that is is the only problem is the love interest and the only problem really in goodbye mr chips is the headmaster who um doesn't quite appreciate how good Mr. Chips is. Yeah. Um, and in Mrs. Miniver, there is a um, a German soldier who Mrs. Miniver captures, um, but it, that's only one scene. Uh, he's the, the enemy, as it were, and she has a confrontation with him. But there isn't a, a baddie all the way through the film, but it's still a brilliant film. Hmm. Uh, but, but very few people write stories like that anymore. But it does have a penis in, so maybe we... Maybe that was the enemy. Maybe that maybe was the that, antagonist. Maybe that was the enemy. <laughs> Did he look angry? <laughs> well, it can. It can. It can be. Ma it can be many people's enemy. Yes. I speak from experience. Indeed. Hello, hello, um, hello <laughs> I grow, I'd like. Um, no, I, you have to physically change the way you move when you do impersonations. And Julian, who I've met a few times, um. He's always on the move with his body. Yes. No, he's he always is. on the move. He, he, <laughs> he, he seems to have calmed down a lot more recently in the moving, I've noticed. Well, well that's well, that's called getting old. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Let, let's be honest, yeah, boys yeah. and girls, it's getting old. He's, he's, he's another icon. Yeah. It really is. Well, I remember when he was, um, when I first met him, was early 80s, and he was the Joan. He was called the Joan Good Collins Club. fan club. Yes. And yes. she, I think, uh, threatened legal action or something, and he had to change all that. Oh. And there was Fanny the Wonder Dog, and um, um, and all. Anyway, he was he was a, a, just a comic genius, I think, in his shows. It was great fun. What What was that? Was it a quiz show he did called? Was it Sticky, Sticky Moments? Moments? Is that Sticky when you're Moments, trying to? Yes. Sticky yeah, moment. I, I'm another, another show I should, probably shouldn't watch when I'm uh, a kid. Yeah, it's half past ten at night. Time for a sticky moment. Yes. <laughs> I, I watched all the wrong shows when I was a child. I really did. Um... And are you are you seeking therapy now you are older? 
No one will touch me. No one will touch me, mate. No one will touch me. Um, so Tuesday, pigeon. Um, oh, pot. I. Um, well, this <laughs> where we get into. Uh, so I've I've had this situation. Yes. Where um, I had a book which I've written, and it was meant to have come out, and then uh, in March, and for various reasons, it sort of came out but didn't. So it. Yes. The, there was a problem with the printing. Yes. Um, and uh, t- to cut a long story short, they then moved the publication date to the end of April, the 28th of April. Mm-hmm. And for reasons I still don't quite understand, it didn't get published on the 28th of April. Oh. Um, oh. And then I looked on Amazon and all that sort of stuff, and it said uh, publication date the 28th of June. So I didn't know what was going on, and, I, and friends of mine had, had ordered it and... and uh, and I was getting a bit embarrassed by this, so um, I rang up a friend of mine to try to explain that he may not get it till the 28th of June. Yeah. It was only the other day I did it. And so I rang him up, and I said, I'm terribly sorry about this, Nigel. One of my oldest friends, he, he, was, um, uh, he was on Spitting Image. He was one of the best puppeteers on Spitting Image. And uh, his uh, earlier thing was he was Hartley Hare in the 1970s. Okay. He was Hartley oh. Hare um, nice. in children's television in a show called Pipkins. A lovely, yeah. lovely man. Um, and he's the monkey in PG Tips. Yeah. Um, anyway, I rang Nigel. I said, I'm terribly, terribly sorry. The, the book, you, you know, I, know, I know you've ordered it. You've been waiting. It's not going to happen. He said, Steve, what are you talking about? I've got it in my hand. Oh. I said, well, you can't have it. It's not been oh. published. He's, he's published in the 28th. of. He said, no. Uh, uh, and mine arrived yesterday. That- <laughs> Okay, that's interesting. So I didn't know. I did. I did speak to the publisher yesterday, and and they've the, the, the all. I don't really understand what's gone on. There was some sort of delay, which meant that it didn't get to Amazon or whatever, uh, and then they they weren't quite sure about it. So it, eventually, it has been published, and that's wow. the book. Um, okay. Now yeah. this is the one I think I sent to you. You did, which yes. The, different yeah, cover. Now the this one, was. yeah. Um, there is a fault in, I won't go into details, but there's a fault uh, which meant that they actually were unable to sell the book. Yeah. So this book um, is now very rare, should that matter. Um, you. And you've got a copy of it, I think. I have. Um, and, and what I did was send uh, uh, about, how many did I send? About 350 to schools. Nice. They were given away to schools. Uh, I've no That's idea what. Idea the school people and uh, school people of uh, school children have, have thought of the book. Um, but anyway, so there's this version, which you cannot get hold of, uh, mm-hmm. except if you sell yours on eBay which um, won't. and I'll this one. Around. So that is my anecdote for, um, uh, you know, there I was ringing up to apologize that the book wasn't available. And he then, and that's how I discovered that the book had been published. Weird, but there we are. That is weird. That is weird. It's, it's a really good book, by the way. Um, oh, I know- thank you. It's um, it's not not aimed at me, obviously, because it's young adults, and I'm far from that. But um, I I really enjoyed it. It, oh, it does grip you. It grips Did you like you Granny? Absolutely. Did you like the Granny character? Oh, yes, yes, completely. You see, when and I was doing people... Granny, uh, who's based on various aunties and and so on, um, so I had I had two aunties. I had an auntie who uh, didn't see many people during the week, and um, and I went to see her, a visitor on a, on a on a Sunday. And she was, I just, I, thinking about it, she was a, a rather a lonely woman and didn't have a chance to talk to anybody. And um, so when I went to visit, she said, everything twice, love it. Hello, Stephen, Stephen John, Stephen John. Oh, it's Stephen John's here. Stephen John's here. And everything was to be said twice. Twice, you see. Always saying everything twice. Always saying everything twice like that. And that's how she spoke, you see. That was very excitable. Saying that she, had, she hadn't much to say, but she said it twice. Twice. I said it twice. <laughs> she was a great nice. character. Slightly yeah. bonkers. Yeah. Um, and it also bumps up the word count as well, doesn't it? Well, yeah, but but, but I, I I haven't put that as the granny, but that's yeah. how I imagine granny sounds like yeah. a little bit. Yeah. And I had my other grandmother who I lived with. I I won't go into complicated details, but I ran away from home when I was fourteen, and I went to live in my grandma's attic. Um, yeah. And because my father was very ill mentally and all sorts of other, my mother had died and my father was mentally ill, so I went to live in my grandmother's attic, um, and um, which was a condemned house, um, and it was pretty unpleasant. I was chatting to somebody I had lunch with earlier, and I said, "Well, he said, what was it like?" I said, "Well, it was uh, the attic was en suite uh, because we had a bucket, and <laughs> it was pretty, 
wow. it was pretty horrendous for two years. I had a, it, but it, you know, my grandmother rescued me, and that is partly what the story is about. It's yeah. about the relationship between the the boy who's probably about twelve or thirteen and the the granny who rescues him. It's as you know, it's a fantasy. You you've read the book. I right. hope that she's funny. Uh, I yes. the kids love it. The, the, the you know you can look online on uh, on Amazon or wherever, and it's there. Um, I think if you're twelve to fourteen is probably the best age range for it. But I know adults have liked it as well. So I'm I'm really thrilled that you liked. Yeah. I like yeah. the book. I mean, there was there was a moment where you know I had to double check when I, I thought he's a young adult, isn't it? Because it was when it, it, really near the beginning where you describe about how a child is. A, almost like obliterated by um electrical cable thing and it's just the description of it is like oh uh, oh okay i didn't expect quite expect that one but yeah well, well yeah, the, the, the the thing that's happening there is it's what is known as a catalyst event in in story terms yeah um and uh it's all in you know books like this so all stories have a catalyst event and most catalyst events or many catalyst events in stories uh, are to connected to, to the weather because uh, a catalyst event is something that where nothing precedes it. And that mm. very little in life has nothing that precedes it. But one of the things that does happen in life is um, uh, the weather. For example, off the top of my head, uh, the thing, John Carpenter's the thing, uh, yeah. the ice melts. I think there's a nice thing that, that, you know, and they find something that's been hidden underneath the ice for thousands upon years. So, you know, the, 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 the something or, or the most famous, I suppose, is the Wizard of Oz, which is the uh, tornado. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what you get is a, a catalyst event. And the catalyst event in this is um, an ice, a bizarre um, fall of ice from the sky. Um, it's never really, it is explained where the ice has come from, but it's like a meteor thing of ice and, and that causes electrical cables. It causes yeah. tiles to fall. Now, the thing about tiles falling, on my 50th birthday, maybe I was older than that, um, I came home on my birthday and it was this huge crash and one of the tiles had fallen from the roof Eek. and I'd missed it by about eight seconds. Mm. Yeah, yeah and the man who came round to fix it i said what would have happened had it hit you he said oh you'd be dead he said these are really heavy it's an old victorian oh it's an edwardian house it's a, it's a 1905 it's a very old house yeah the tiles are huge they're much heavier than modern times and they're sharp right and he said it would have killed you I can, and, I, can see, I can see where that whole beginning couple of chapters came from now. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's what you know. That's what people do with with with, with and, and actually the high street that is my own high street in Barnet. It's it's based on, um, and, and there was a church nearby because there's a church, and then there was there was roadworks outside the church. And what happens? You see these things, and then you tie them into you know you know with tiles. Uh, and yeah. I'd always been interested in in. Um, uh, there's a film called Ben Hur, and it, a tile falling is the is the catalyst of that story, um, mm. and so it, it you know accidents are a catalyst event, Absolutely. and then uh, you know other things you know other things happen. Um, yeah. Although is a although is a child is is a squidger which is a sort of a special creature, so um, he doesn't really know what's going on, um, and part of the story it's a mystery is you know, to, to discover exactly what has been occurring. In fact, you don't actually discover exactly what's happened until the middle of book two. Mm. Um, oh, so you'll have to get yeah. book two um, at some stage in the future. Yeah. Or maybe uh, we can do another one of these when I was say, say, send me a out. Steve. I'll just, um, uh, the reason I've got you on the podcast a second time is because I want to know what happens. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it, 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 and, and, and also when I do, um, when, I, when I wrote the book, I wrote it, I wrote characters as I spoke them. And I yeah. always played different voices uh for the characters you yeah. know um yeah. so i, I across, actually I so like so you know i'm doing cool. i'm doing my um i'm doing my my granny voice now so when i was writing granny to make sure she sounded right on page yeah. i would always i haven't really i can't really tell you what she sounds like because um that what you know i'm not going to read anything out but um but you know that's how i made sure that it it, it sounded right on the page, as it were. It was rhythmically correct. So, but you know, I'm glad you liked it. 
Okay. Yeah, well, I did. I did. I really, I really enjoyed it. Um, I also like the fact that uh, the way the characters are written and um, how they speak, uh, I could almost hear them in your your voice. I don't know what your voice is like because they've always got different accents as well. Well, they do. No, they all have. They they all have a, a um. Uh, they, there's a there's a, a Scouse nurse and there's they the, they end up in in this slightly weird house. You don't quite know why it's weird, but everybody slightly has a slightly old fashioned way of speaking. And then you realise, you know, uh, it's called a time adventure, which gives you an indication uh, mm. of where we're going with a story. It's a time story. Uh, and so all these people that speak slightly old-fashioned language, um, and there's a, the, the baddie of it um, is is Aloysius, who um, is is when I was writing it, it was John Hurt. That's oh, who I had in mind. Yes, um, uh, and a very sort of high pitch John Hurt, because okay. uh, his character has a high pitch, mm. and I just wanted that that. Um, John Hurt was a very fine actor, but he, 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 um, he you know, he, he, he had that sort of voice. How can I say? Uh, he had that sort of voice that could be very threatening and very high, <laughs> and uh, you know, a little, a little bit creepy. Yes, if he wanted to be, that is and. Um, uh, that's not a particularly great impression, but um, uh, yeah. um, what's what's the line he has as Mister Ollivander in in in? He did terrible yeah. things. Yeah, great, but terrible. Is that something like that? He's got yeah, that great line in. Yeah. Uh, he who must not be mentioned. The pa- the one chooses the wizard, <laughs> Mister Potter. <laughs> So, but that's oh, not I'm the mean. element of John Hurt I went for. I went mm. for the much higher one and rather <laughs> on I am not an elephant. So you can see how vocally tired I was. So it's not just typing the thing out. You're 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 acting it all. Yeah, of course. And it as I say, it does come across. Uh, it really does. Um, and I made I made some some of the lines that's in the book came from me just wandering around this room, letting my mind. You know, go wherever it, and my, you know, speaking and just oh, that's an interesting line. I'll just write it down. Yeah, it's the best way, isn't it? It's the best way. So was was Wednesday the call to your friend? Uh, let me get this right. Yes, and um, it's sorted out now because we've we've sorted it out with the the publisher and uh, okay. um, the, okay. the they were very nice about things and. Uh, I, I never really discovered what was going on with the the delay, but there's no delay now, and uh, and so on and so forth. They're in, they're a lovely publisher. I tell you, I hope he won't mind me telling you this, the publisher. Mm. So uh, there were, I've written two books already, and um, there's number three to come. So so I uh, they agreed to publish it, and so we had the Zoom call for the first time. And um, we were chatting about the book, and um, I said, you know, at the end of book two, he said, oh, no, 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 I, I've not read book two. I've not read book two. I said, you're not ready? He said, no, no, I've not read book two. I said, you know, you know how it ends? Uh, you know how book one ends, and then it goes on to book two. So at the end of book two, he said, no, 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 I, I've not read the end of book one. I, I <laughs> I said, you've not read it? He said, no, no. I, I, I looked slightly puzzled. And he said, I, I've read enough to know that it's well written and original. And that's all I need to know. And I just thought he was the most wonderful man in the world. Yeah. Because, um, you know, you get these publishers who want to tell you how to write your book. And, and you know, he's, you know, he trusts me. Uh, simply because it's original and well written, yeah. and nothing else matters, you know. Yeah. He sort of, he, and, and so he, I don't think he's read book two even now. I think that's a good thing in a way yeah. because it, it, he's one of those publishers. His mantra is good books well written or good books worth reading. Yeah, and yeah. that's yeah. his primary thing. And uh, uh, you, you know, I think obviously he wants to make yeah. a profit but make some money feed his family and all the rest of it 
Um, but I, I was so thrilled when he said that. Um, other people have said, well, no, you surely won't. I said, no, no, I just, the fact that all that matters was it was well written and original in I mean, his opinion. But that keeps it objective as well, really. Like, it, it, if it's not his kind of story, and then he's like, "Well, it's well." I think that's true. He's. He, I think he had the ability to, um, to, to you know, it, 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 perhaps if it was his sort of story, he would have read to the end of book two because he was excited mm -hmm. by it. But, but also he looks after eight hundred books. So, sure. you sure. know, <laughs> how do you read? Um, 800 books, you know, and some of them are history books and they're very, I've seen them, they're very sure. big. Yeah, so, yeah. um, but this is this is the same, this is the same way that uh, penises get into films, though. <laughs> well, it's, I did, I, 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 there was a producer, I, and somebody said, I, I didn't know who it was I was chatting to, uh, recently, and, um, it was a, it was a, a, a fil, uh, not a film producer, it was a theatre producer. And he said, I never read, I never read the plays. Mm -hmm. You never read the plays. I think I know who it is, but I didn't say who it is for various legal reasons. Yeah. Um, and he said, no, no, I never, uh, uh, this is anecdotal. No, I, I never read. So somebody tells me the summary of what they're about. And, you know, if I find, if I find the summary interesting, that's all I need to know. Yeah. Um, but uh, I never sit down and read them. And I thought that was really interesting. And he's a very successful producer. Yeah. Um, I think one of the problems uh, with the whole, I don't want to get bitter and twisted with publishing, because look, I've got, um, where's it gone? These are my rejections. Oh, oh, when you're publishing them. So these are all the people I sent it to. Um, wow. Who rejected it. Wow. That's, um, uh... And what happens is, they give you a reason why they've rejected it, some, if you're lucky. So one said, um, it's very well written, but I don't think your story is going to work because you need to tell them more information at the beginning. And, you know, we don't really know quite what's going on. Um, mm. You've got to tell them exactly what's going on at the beginning. And, and I basically said, yeah, it's a mystery story. It's a sort of, you know, and by definition of the word mystery, um, you know, yeah. and there's an old line, Wilkie Collins, technically it's not Wilkie Collins, but he said, the rule of storytelling is make them laugh. Yeah. Make them cry. And then make them wait. And that's a yeah. great rule of storytelling. Make them that's laugh, true. make them cry, make them wait. Um, and it minds a mystery. You make them wait. And, and this, no, 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 you, no, no, you've got to tell them everything at the beginning. No, okay. So I got that. Um, so uh, well written, but terrible story. And then I got one said, um, the story's great, but we don't really rate your writing. Okay, that's oh, fine. Oh, nice. um, um, one person said, uh, I don't think your age group is right. This is clearly for seven year olds, not the age group you're aiming it at. Somebody wrote and said, this is clearly not a children's book. This is clearly aimed at adults. It has to be an adult. And then you get contra... You, you, and you know what? You can only write what you can write. That's and it. if you listen to... You, you take... I sent the, you know, I sent the book to loads and loads of friends, including Adam. Adam's read it about four times. And in one of the versions, he said to me, yeah, the, the, it's... it's a, when they go into the house, you know, when they go into the the the, the old coach in the story, the second mm. half of the book, mm. um, uh, he said, "There's just a bit too complicated." I said, "Right?" Tell, no. He said, "No, it doesn't matter." I said, "No, no, it does. It does matter." Uh, he, said, he said, "There's something about it that's just too complicated." I said, "What if I take this element out?" Um, there's an element in the granny originally said to William, look for what isn't there um, okay. as a clue to yeah. the, the secret of the house. Right. And um, so, and he does find what isn't there and it, I won't tell you what it is, but there is something that isn't there. But I took out granny's line and the complication of looking for what isn't there, because I think the, com the, the idea of looking for what isn't there is he said it's too complicated so i rewrote mm. that whole section and took that idea out okay. and then he reread it he said it's so much better yeah because you so i always listened to people's problems and one of the problems in that second half of the book 
uh, I think it's better now, was um, some people were reading it and not finishing it. Mm. And the general feedback was that it was just went, it just went on for too long. Mm. Uh, so I halved it basically. I I cut it. Ab- I had to make it. Continues. I had to put the story in. Yeah. But there was loads of stuff, and I I basically I tell you what I did if I can find it. Maybe I can't. I can't remember where things are. So um, in the second half of the book. Um, William, who is an orphan, he ends up, um, yeah, he ends up essentially doing what Cinderella did and um, uh, Jane Eyre and uh, Oliver Twist. He gets badly treated by cruel people. Uh, he's made to do chores, mm-hmm. and uh, he eats bad food, which is basically what happens when you end up in an orphanage. It's bad food, ill treatment, bullying. And you're made to do the washing up. I mean, that's mm. one of the things. So I found this is my grandmother's uh, book, which is a uh, hundred five hundred and one uh, York. And this was published, I think, in about 1932. Oh, wow. And it's one of the very few things I have for my grandma. So I read this book and it's full of the most wonderful advice. So I thought I is my research. I thought I'll put this in the book. Nice. Yeah. Um, there was too much of it. Oh. Really interesting of, about how you know cleaning things, but there was just too much of it. Too much so I basically cut the vast majority of it. Wow. Uh, I was loath to cut it, but you know that's what you have to do. So I kill it, your babies, um, as they say. It, it, it kill your babies. Um, kill those, and I did love it, but I lost easily lost. I think four or five thousand words, uh, wow. and I cut loads. Uh, there was loads of references that I cut out and stuff. And um, it was a better book by listening to people. You know, yeah. if somebody doesn't finish your book, mm-hmm. there's a reason why they don't finish your book. And That's I met true. somebody today. I was having lunch and um, somebody was there I knew who's, who's, who's a PR man in horror movies. And um, he, um, he'd read it four, four years ago when I wrote it. And he said, it's so much better now. It really flows. And I said, well, that's because... I got the scissors out and mm. cut it, you know, mm-hmm. and listened to what people said, you know. So I'm not precious about the writing. Um, mm. But anyway, I hope it's funny. I mean, that's the that, that's the thing that I think kids would like best is yeah. they like the granny character because she's funny. Yeah, and it is, it is a pacey little book. And, uh, yeah, I um, I mean, I wouldn't mind reading the unabridged version, if I'm honest. But, uh... <laughs> well, yeah. the, there's maybe I should bring out the special edition, which is, yeah. you know, uh, what, 125,000 words long. You know? <laughs> yeah. No, short is good, I think. Keep, uh, I think you know, so. keep it, yeah, keep, it so keep it tight. Uh, and the yeah. thing is, as well, with writing, I tell you what, I the big mistake I made on the book was I trusted an earlier draft to be good enough to send out. And the reason why so many people turned it down was because the the third draft, which I thought was good, was nowhere near good enough. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, And it wasn't until I'd sent it to a friend who said, you've got to change this, and and I really worked it. So it's a year to write a book and a year to rewrite it. Yeah. Um, uh, And even then we're in the lap of the gods as to whether anybody will ever buy it and whether it will get picked up. And, um, you know, that's pure luck, you know, (laughs) as as a result of this podcast, you know, it's, you know, get on it. I mean, I can recommend it. it Steven Spielberg, you're out there. I know you listen to this every week. (laughs) You watch every week. You, the the rights are available. You know, we've got the rights. The move is yours if you want it. As soon as I get him on as a guest, I will certainly uh, ask him. (laughs) Um, well, yeah, I do get the book because it is yeah. it is wonderful. Yeah, you haven't read it yet, no. have you, Emmy? But no, because you've been reading, it. but been you're going to do it. now, love, aren't you? Yeah. We're gonna get it you're going to do it now. Yeah, you got to. It is good. Um, so we're going to move on to Thursday by the book. Um, <laughs> what <laughs> what happened on Thursday by the book? Now, listen, dreams, right? Dreams. Ooh, yeah. Um, I find listening to people's dreams the most boring thing in the world, right? <laughs> and there are people who put on Facebook pages. I dreamt last night. I just maybe you do it. I don't know. Maybe I'm I'm telling no. you something you do. No. Uh, I I find I dreamt last night. Who cares? Mm-hmm. You know, it never happened. 
Um, yeah. And can I also add that it's it is slightly weird. I hadn't realized this because I've essentially now become a writer as a performer. You're writing things that aren't true all day. In the evening, you watch something that isn't true in terms of a, you know, a film or something. Mm -hmm. And then you dream things that aren't true. And essentially, you're living a complete fantasy life where nothing is real. You're imagining, you're watching, you're dreaming. So I don't really want to talk about dreams, except that something happened in a dream the other day. (laughs) uh, No, but this is this is I've never happened to me before. I dreamt to smell. Oh, I have never dreamt to. Have you ever dreamt to smell? So, I the oh, dream was okay. Um, okay, so dreams work in a funny way. So I've got lots of DVDs. I'm old fashioned. I don't do streaming. So I opened a box of DVDs, and for reasons I don't really understand, instead of there being DVDs, there was um, uh, breadcrumb chickens uh, you know uh, pr- yeah. fried chicken oh, yes. and i smelt the fried chicken oh and i i've ne- i i was thinking do you know when i woke up i thought have i ever dreamt to smell <laughs> I, I, and i don't think i have now have you emmy, ever dreamt to smell you're 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 a lucid dreamer yeah. emmy have you ever dreamt to smell i can't think of an example or anything i can't remember i'm gonna have to you know when and I know where I know where the image came from because we well, Adam who is you know, he orders burrito and there's a burrito shop on the high street very nice burrito shop mm. uh, and there's also a McDonald's so so when you walk among uh, uh, on my high street you get this pungent smell of of of, of cooking oil and and yeah. you know the aroma so I know where the I know where the origin of the uh, the the smell comes from but dreams are so visual, you know, they yeah. mix up things like, you know, I opened a, um, a DVD and inside there's uh, there's flat chicken that you get at Waitrose with breadcrumbs on. Oh, I suppose um, it's now that, who, who, who knows how that's connected? Who cares? Uh, you know, what Freud would have made of that? Who knows? Who cares? Um, but the thing is, I, I said, and Adam, I, I mentioned it to Adam. I said, have you ever dreamt to smell? He said, no. I said, well, neither have I, but I dreamt to smell last night. Uh, was it was it pleasant? I mean, I can imagine there's worse. Smell. It was lovely because you yeah. know it had a wonderful smell of of <laughs> cooking, and you could smell and it smelled of chicken as well. You could smell mm. it was chicken, and you could smell that that you know what I'm talking about when you when you go past McDonald's and you've got this yes. aroma that and there's there's, there's, there's a, a sweetness in it smell. and yeah. uh, and it was it's a, it's not an unpleasant smell, but um and I, and that's was my <laughs> abiding memory of of of. The DVDs with breadcrumb chicken in them was the smell of the fat. I mean, you, you, is that is that probably the most boring thing you've no, ever had on your? Program? No, no, no. I don't think it is. Uh, I, I can I can tell you what the most boring one was. Um, <laughs> someone fitting a a rotary line. Um, no, I. Th- yeah, I I can't. I don't think no, of an occasion where I've I've dreamt I actually noises don't... and colours. I don't even know if I've dreamt noises. You know, I do. Sometimes I wake myself up. I, I I dream there's music, and I'll wake up annoyed that music has woken me up. And that no, there isn't any. I dreamt it. I dreamt my own disturbance. I, I personally hate that thing where you dream something that you know is one hundred percent true, and then you wake up and there's a split second where you still believe it. Well, I hate no, I, 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 I haven't had this. Oh, we, let's not talk about dream because I'm breaking no, my not. rule of. of let's of, not. But I, I have dreamt I'm in a Bond movie and I'm Bond. So, oh, uh, no. uh, you know, that's sort of that was, and it's like living in a, it's like living in a movie. And I sort of know it's a movie dream and it's not yeah. real. And, and I, I, and I just like being Bond and you know, yeah. there's a car chase <laughs> and all those. Things. Most dream, most dreams are in my opinion i don't have i'm not in a, no. a freudian in that sense I, I you know I, I they're not meaningless because clearly the you know the images of of um i i like breadcrumb things and i got dvds <laughs> and so you know so it's i live a very boring existence watching dvds and eating breadcrumbs yeah um uh, so <laughs> things covered in breadcrumbs so that's you know, if you wanted an insight into my life, then you've yeah, certainly it, got it. <laughs> it's, to be honest, it's a bit like ours. Yeah. <laughs> really. 
Yeah, the, the only occasion I can think of where uh, I was disappointed when I woke up because I really genuinely believed it was I believed I could hover about 10 inches off the ground. And I thought, yeah. Oh, those are lovely, aren't they, when you're well, f- semi-flying? Yeah, I've always been able to do this. When I was a kid, I used to hover off the ground. I was, and I was so convinced. When I woke up, I was like, oh, shit. I know. I, li- I, I haven't dreamt of flying for a while, but I like the flying ones. Yes, I, I think yeah. I like the flying ones. Well, I, I and, think... and the thing about the other thing, and I, I've written about dreams recently because okay, I've, uh, to, to, to help support the book, on the switches.com, I mentioned this because it's free, I, I've written a history of time travel. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. um, uh, and it's there's no you don't have to subscribe you can just go on switches and it's about 120,000 words history of time travel in the movies and one of the things I say was that um, uh, the very earliest time travel stories were were arguably around about 1800 or what, maybe slightly earlier than that um, but uh, the point being we time travel in our dreams yeah, we do. You know, and and th- so human beings have been time traveling uh, in our dreams since we dreamt. Um, and it's always struck me that that I read when I was doing the history of time travel, uh, there are very very few time travel stories earlier than about I can't remember the first one. It's about seventeen fifty eight or something. Um, there aren't any time travel stories in you know things like. Uh, Homer, or to my knowledge, you know, the Chinese stories and stuff. Mm. Um, there's the three wishes stories where, you know, the genie can offer you three wishes, yeah. can possibly make you younger and stuff like that, but it doesn't involve time travel. No. Um, the very first time travel machine uh, predated um, time the, the time machine, uh, H.G. Wells, Thing about the time machine is that uh, that what makes it so important is that he based it on science. Mm, um, yes. He actually based it on mathematics and things like that. It's nonsense, of course, because you can't time travel. Yeah. Um, but th- that, but it, 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 what's brilliant about H.G. Wells um, is that he makes it sound so credible. Uh, and he spends, I'd forgotten about this, but he's, it, it's a short book, but he spends several pages going into the, to the, the, the mathematical logic of it. Um, uh, anyway, I won't bore you with that, but, but that's some slightly obsessed me. And you can mm. see, because um, I printed it out, and this is it. Um, oh, okay. Telling the tales of time, and I printed it oh. out, so Adam is my um, <laughs> proofreader, so you wow. can see that it's actually a full book. And as I say, it's free and available for anybody interested in the history of time travel. Nice. Uh, it's there on Tinternet right now. Yeah. What's what's the address on that again? Uh, swidges.com. Swidges.com. Nice. Swidges.com. So just in case you don't know how to spell Swidges, there's just the Swidges. So it's Swidges.com. And um, the, the website's been developed. It's a slow process and there'll be other stuff going on it. Wow. Nice. Um, and have you seen the Adam Project on I haven't uh, watched Netflix? it yet. I know, I know of it, yeah. It's the just Rome. great fun. And yeah, uh, yeah. there's a nice tribute thing, for example, you know, in, in Back to the Future. The dog is called uh, Einie after Einstein. And a really nice thing is that there's a dog in the Adam Project and he's called Hawking after oh, Stephen nice. Hawking. So yeah. there's loads of – it's a funny – it's a tongue-in-cheek movie. yeah. It um, plays around with. It's got all the classic time travel story tropes of, you know, meeting your dead relative and having yeah. a scene with them and them not knowing who you are and things yeah, like that. Yeah. Um, it's it's very funny. Uh, um, Ryan Reynolds to me is uh, is an actor I've only just recently sort of realised who he is. Uh, he's he's one of the few actors who's funny in modern yes. films. He's so uh, charismatic, he's, isn't he? He's, he's very. He's apparently some. My niece told me that he's the um, is the hottest crush, uh, Hollywood crush. Yeah. Um, but what strikes me about him uh, more more than the he is very handsome and all the rest of it. Uh, you know, he's got a lightness of touch in his acting, and he's genuinely funny. And oh, yes, I, I've yeah. seen him interviewed, and he seems a really nice guy. And yeah. and and the Adam, I would, you know, the, he goes back and meets himself when he was twelve or something. Uh, and the repartee between the young Adam and the old Adam is the best part of the film. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, 
and uh, oh, I, I've seen it twice now, I, and I've been writing about that. That's the the you know the the, the most recent thing. And, yeah. and I got I, I slightly shocked a friend of mine. I said well, I've been reading watching a load of um, Korean time travel stories. What? Korean? <laughs> yes, there's one called Alice, um, and I watched the best one ever, which I thought was a brilliant. Was called Dark, which is a German time travel series very very um uh, very deep and and not many gags frankly Um, and i've written this article part of time the time telling the tales of time where i look at um national psyches and it's very german and that's not because i think it's one of the best things i've ever seen about time travel Mm. Uh, it's long and difficult it's not any but it's it's as good as it gets it's brilliant Uh, and then there's another one called um Time, there's Travelers, which is an American one, and I think called, and one's called Timeless or something, which is more like the time to time tunnel stuff from the sixties. Yeah, I'm yeah. a Doctor Who man, you know. So, um, um, th- look, there's me, there's my little Tardis. You know, I'm, I'm not. A, oh yeah. I'm being, woo, woo. Um, <laughs> so I've got me, you know. And so I was brought up on on um, on time travel stuff and. Yeah. Uh, in fact, my web designer rang me up the other day and he said, I'm going to catch you out now. I said, oh, are you? He said, time slip. Time mm. slip. I said, mm. oh, that's the early 70s uh, black and white series. <laughs> he said, how did you know that? I said, well, I remember it. Uh, it's 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 the fence. It's a children's show and the, 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 it's an army barracks or something and the kids go through a fence and they end up in a different time. He said, I thought I was going to catch you out. And he no. said, <laughs> no. Well, I, it, it, it's it, it, the, the, there, are, there are aspects of, of I've also gone into God as well, okay. um, mm. uh, the, the, because, you know, where is God in time? And mm. that's a question that Thomas Aquinas asked. Um, uh, so there's a, so I've, I've talked about the philosophy of, 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 of God and time um, and that the nearest you get in stories is an Alex Garland uh, series called uh, Devs. Okay, yeah. um, uh, and actually, the reveal of that, without spoiling it too much, is it's not really devs; it's Deus, mm. uh, and it's about God and time, right, partly. So that. it's about predestination and all that sort of stuff. So I've, yeah, I've addressed yeah. all all that. So you may catch me out on certain things, as, you know. But but on, on the whole, um, yeah, you're you know, I've, I've tried yeah. to do my research and, and yeah. stuff. Well, because oh, anyway. one one of my favorite time travel films is uh, Twelve Monkeys. Uh, which yes, which is, is based on La Jette. Is it La, La Jette? Jette? Yeah, which is ph- phenomenal. Um, and uh, I've actually had a. It's been. It's like you, know, you get those sort of projects that you never actually fulfill, and it's always been deep down inside you, and you want to do it. But I've actually I've wanted to do a time travel story, but it's set in the future about a time travel agency, right? Which will uh, essentially people pay lots of money, and they go back in time to certain areas and witness it and view it. And well, it's... there's a thing called um, time scape. Yes. Uh, yes. Which is um, a Jeff, is it Jeff Bridges film? I think, um, yeah. I think and one. that's based on a, a novel, which I think was called the vintage season. Mm. And that novel is about time travel tourism. Yes. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I can't remember the details. To be honest, they all mix into one. Of course. Um, but time travel tourism, um, and the time travel tourism was the subject of a. Uh, I think it's called the sound. Is it called the sound of thunder? Uh, which is um, a story where somebody goes back in time to the Jurassic Age to witness the you know the dinosaurs yeah yeah and they accidentally stamp on a butterfly yeah that sounds about right (laughs) and that changes the course of events in the future and when he comes back to the future it's different yeah and and by standing on this butterfly uh he has altered the course i can't i may have got the details wrong yeah um and i think it's called the sound of thunder or the noise of thunder because the hint is he is so depressed as a result of what he has done 
that the last thing he hears is the sound of thunder, which is essentially him shooting himself. I see. Because oh. I may excuse me for this because I wrote this whole thing last year. Um, and I've, there's so many stories in my head, I can't remember the details. Yeah. So if I've got that wrong, uh, uh, please don't write to me. It Just accept right. the fact that I it get things right. wrong occasionally. Yeah. And I, mean, I can't they're, remember they're, who wrote they're... it. I think it might be not Sterling. It might be, I don't think it's Arthur C. Clarke. I, I can't remember who wrote it. It might be. Anyway, who knows? It's one of them guys. <laughs> it's one of them guys. But the, um, the, the thing, you know, my, my stories are, it, it, in the second book, it's time travel. In the first book, there's hints of, there's a time loop in the first book. Mm. There's a sort of time travel in the first book, but it's not really. Um, uh, but the second book is time loop. Uh, there's a big time loop in it. Um, and there is time travel back to 1944. Um, and uh, that, that uh, I won't, you know, go into details about that, but it's basically, it, none of this is fundamentally original. Nah. Um But I was chatting to a friend of mine today who's a big film man, and he said, well, how do they time travel? I said, well, I, I've done something a little bit unusual. Um, I've based it on uh, the German philosopher Hegel. He said, what? <laughs> I said, I based it on Hegel, who had a, a, it was a metaphysics uh, uh, philosopher, and he, he was weird. He was a real weirdo, I think. And he sort of felt that if you connected to the cosmos, if you connected to the flow of time, you could somehow connect to time and live in the past and the future um uh well magic mushrooms probably did yes. that for you but um so I, I i've got an element of that in it but i do like time travel stuff like there's a wonderful christopher reeve film called somewhere in time mm. um and there's no time machine uh, he essentially thinks himself into time travel uh, and I like those stories as well, you know, and it's a beautiful love story. It's a lovely, lovely film if you've never seen it. Yeah. It's on the opposite scale of Back to the Future or Timescape or uh, The Vintage Season, whatever you want to call it. Um, it, it it's not in that category. Not, neither is it in the 12 Monkeys uh, category either. Um, it, it, it's, it's, it's a romantic love story. There's another one called The Lake, the Lake House with uh, Sandra Bullock and Christopher yeah. uh, Keanu Reeves. Yes. It's a lovely, charming film. I think based on a Korean uh, film. Um, I, I and, and many of these films, incidentally, are new to me. Yeah. Um, uh, there were, you know, people. I sent my article to the British Film Institute. A lovely guy there called Dick Fiddy read it, and he said it's really, really, really good, Steve. But you've missed these out, and you really <laughs> should get hold of these. And I, he was absolutely right. I got hold of. Um, you know, a very. I had to get a German recording of Timescape. Uh, mm. It's not a great film, but it's really interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah and yeah. and then there's things like the Adam Project that you know you. And then there's other time travel stuff just keeps yeah. coming out. Where and the, does, as I said, um, the Korean ones are good too. Where does uh, Where does Bill and Ted fit into all this? <laughs> do, you, do you know Bill and? It, 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 what's <laughs> so brilliant about that is that one, the telephone box is a lovely tribute to the TARDIS. Of course. Uh, yeah. That's the first thing to say. The second thing to say is it's very, very funny. It is. The third thing to say is there is the most brilliant play on the, the keys in the bush uh, of, of going back in. They, they need the keys in the bush. I can't yes. remember the exact details of it. Yeah. They need the keys in the bush. To, and they said, dude, dude. You know, in the in the next bit that you won't see, essentially, we will go into the uh, into our time machine. Yeah. We will go back in time, get the keys off my dad, go forward in time, and put them in the bush. It, it's that whole dude. Does that mean remember, the keys are there now? Yes, yeah. they find the keys. Remember that something, the tape is that right? recorder. Remember the tape recorder. Is that remember the bin? And that's I, I love it. It's it's actually what's really good about it, and and dare I say it for Doctor Who fans, including myself, Doctor Who sometimes plays around with the laws of time, and it can't make up its mind. Um, the laws of time in Bill and Ted are are really good. You know, they <laughs> stick to them, and and it was written clearly by p people who 
who, who knew the genre. And when I watched that sequence with, uh, you know, where they, where they, dude, look, the keys are in the bush. We can go in and rescue the, the, the people that, that they brought back. Um, and uh, the whole idea of, of uh, going back in time and stealing Socrates and whoever, I, he, 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 I, I it, you know, yes, dark is, and that's what I like about the whole time travel genre. You've got um, dark, which is a very deep folklore. Uh, it's actually Miltonian. It's about the fall. It's the fall of mankind. They've got characters called Adam and Eve. It's it's metaphysical. It's very very deep. It's wonderful. And then you've got Bill and Tell, Bill and Ted's excellent adventure, where they just need yep. <laughs> they need to get what they need to do an essay over the weekend or something, don't they? And <laughs> yeah, they, they, they yeah. and, and they That's need it. to go back and, dude, let's go back in time and get people. Um, I laughed so much. I loved it. Yeah. I'm a big, it is, big fan. It, I've watched it so many times. I, I, I still love it. It's a great film. Um, um, and, so, so no, I think that's, that, and, and I'm not doing, I'm not doing, uh, my, my means of time travel is, is more unusual, but, um, mm. uh, uh, and, 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 and what the story of book two um the, the big one to play with is the paradoxes of time, including the grandfather paradox. Yeah, I was going to ask. Um, about that. Uh, now, the grandfather paradox is is it's certainly there in brilliantly in Back to the Future when you oh, yeah. you know you go back in time and um, uh, uh, but this and I can't remember exactly where it's from because you know I said I wrote this last year, but there was a sort of science fiction magazine from about 1932 or maybe 40s i can remember now and one of the questions in the magazine was what would happen if you went back in time and you killed your grandfather and one of the people who wrote in and said why would you want to kill your grandfather <laughs> you know no one asked that <laughs> you know and then somebody said oh, i know let's have a time travel rule where you can go into the past as long as you agree not to kill your grandfather yeah yeah um and uh, uh Douglas Adam plays with that idea as well he slightly sends it up i think uh in uh i don't think it's hitchhikers i think it's the later book mm-hmm. um and and i think that the time travel stuff appeals to people who like ideas because it's all ideas i think it that the the paradox side of it appeals to people who are good at mathematics have a mathematical mind um and there's um the whole thing about causal loops there's a causal loop in uh the star trek uh the voyage home the one with the whale with oh, with yes. um i think it's the glasses or something that 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 uh, you ask yourself where were the glasses manufactured <laughs> so they were bought i think by um mccoy as a present for um uh, Kirk, Kirk in the past, as it were, sells the glasses to raise some money, or there's some issue, and then you think the glasses were never manufactured. Mm. Mm. There's no, it's a causal loop, yeah, uh, yeah, and it's and it's brilliant. Um, and there's another one where you where you become the causal loop of your own self, uh, and uh, I think there's a very early time travel from the. Um, the flip side of Dominic Hyde, I think it's called, okay. uh, from the 1970s, um, where essentially he goes back and I think he becomes, uh, he he impregnates the woman and he becomes himself or something. Oh, There's wow. Lister in Red Dwarf discovers that uh, he is connected. Uh, the, he thinks he was abandoned as a baby and then he goes back in time and he, he turns out he was the one that abandoned himself. Is that right? Something like that. Um, and I, I just love the when 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 they're played with with an emotional thing uh, with Lister because he, he he thought he was rejected um, as a as a child and that's affected him. And actually, he goes back in as I say, he goes back in times and he understands for the first first time that he was not rejected and abandoned. Yeah. Um, and that's and there's a time loop causal loop yeah. in that. Uh, the, not, um, not a time loop. The, hmm? the, the Terminator as well. Is well, there's the Terminator, movie. which is which mm. is um, which is what I call an endangered futures thing. So yeah. with, with endangered futures, you you have an endangered future, and you 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 go back in time, and, yeah. and the, uh, the, the 
is it the cell that they have or the uh, uh, processor? Uh, yeah. You realize nobody made it. It's it's on a yeah. causal loop. Yeah, but it's also it, John Connor sending his own dad back to impregnate his mum. And yeah. whether yes, he sends his own dad back, which is a which is a sort of causal oh, loop. I worded that uh, so romantically as well, didn't I? <laughs> and, and it was, and, and and also, what's great about that is she becomes the hero. She is. Uh, because you know the the guy dies, and it's it's actually the woman who, you know, you you think of Terminator as a as a man's film uh, in some oh, ways yeah. because it's men fighting yeah. each other, but she is she is the hero, and that's a that was pretty revolutionary, I think. Completely. Um, and and then the the twist in the second one, I love the fact as well with that that the logic of uh, you don't wear clothes, mm-hmm. um, yes, which is there as well in one of the. Uh, a Korean time travel uh, things about not wearing clothes, which is sort of taken from Terminator. So uh, I like Terminator because it it, um, uh, it 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 very much sticks to the rules, um, and I also like um, Back to the Future where the picture disappears, yeah. um, and uh, the you know Doc Brown explains the rules of time, particularly in 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 Back to the Future Two. Uh, my book is is doesn't massively go into all that sort of stuff there is the grandfather paradox which is played within book three which i haven't quite worked out yet um but you know i i i you know i i sort of steeped in this and and forgive me if i have made mistakes as i'm summing up the plots but i've mm. got you know there's a lot literally of hundreds right of them in yeah. my head yeah. and i get them mixed up sometimes yeah. <laughs> It sounds a lot, <laughs> and I wish I could remember who wrote the Sound of Thunder. But it will, you know, it's um, anyway. It doesn't matter. It will come to no. me. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not. Very, I'm not a quizzer. I don't remember things like that. You could just edit in you just saying the name later on when you. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll, let you, I'll let you know the name. Um, we'll Google it. <laughs> Maybe it's not called the Sound of Thunder. Maybe it's called something else. But um, and and the butterfly effect, as uh, which it's known as, um, it was actually a seagull originally. Um, and it came. It came from a, a, a man, a, a weatherman, who basically said, "The weather can change on a seagull's wing." Oh. Uh, again, it might be a pigeon. Forgive me. I'm tired, and I may. Have, uh, but that didn't sound quite sort of poetic no. enough. So no. somebody along the line changed it to a butterfly effect, which is the flap of a butterfly's wing, yeah. changing uh, events. Well, his basic point was that the smallest thing, uh, in terms of weather can um can you know grow and grow and grow and and current and eventually cause a a, a tornado yeah um and then you get this thing where uh, which is about going back to god and predestination and all that sort of stuff um uh, predestination is is more godlike but you can also have um predeterminism which is similar but without god and that is that at the beginning of the universe, because atoms, you know, behave physically in certain ways and can only behave in those ways, um, this conversation that we're having was predetermined 13 billion years ago, mm. uh, because that is the nature of the of our existence that we mm. are predetermined because of the way. I don't agree with that, incidentally, um, and that is the subject partly of Alex Alex Garland's Devs or Deus. Yeah. Which, as I say, is is really about about the concept of predeterminism and 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 uh, predestination and God. It's anyway, there you are. That's fascinating, that's... <laughs> isn't it? Fascinating. And and wormholes as well. I did a. I I looked mm. at the history of wormholes and um, uh, the, um, the the concept is um, oh, uh, it, Kurt. Well, what's his name? Uh, the mathematician who was a friend of Einstein. And for Einstein's birthday, when he was 70, um, uh, oh, I wish I could remember his name now, he wrote uh, for Einstein a paper arguing, based on ty- uh, Einstein's own theory of relativity, there's a general theory and there's a, uh, uh, another theory, that actually time travel was possible. He did it, he said it's, and that was his birthday present. You'd have thought Einstein would have preferred a cake, but you know he got this, you know, and from then on, this this I think was then published, and because this very well known philosopher who's gone out of my head um, wrote this um, uh, paper on the possibility of time travel actually being true, 
that sparked off in the fictional terms uh, this whole concept of wormholes and and so on because you know Einstein argued that it, it, and actually time travel is possible in the sense that there were two twins one was an astronaut who went up into space and another he was called Scott and his in his twin stayed down on earth um and I, Scott in the astronaut spent a year I think in the space station going around the earth very quickly and he came back uh, something like point naught 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 of a second younger than his brother. Mm. Um, Crazy. But you're talking, you know, yeah. uh, uh, fractions. But technically, yeah. he travelled in time. But it's all new technique. So anyway, this 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 article that um, was written for Einstein's seventieth birthday. Um, yes, mathematically it is possible, uh, but not in our universe. Our universe is not designed to allow that to happen. But of course science fiction writers never bothered looking at that part of no. the no. paper. They just looked at the um, at the fact that it's possible. And no, then yeah. another philosopher came up with um, uh, the fourth dimension um, mm. as a concept, and that, I think, in the 1930s, that came. And multiverses, there was a man called Everett who uh, did a lecture on the possibility of multiverses very early on. I think it was about 19, maybe mm. the 1920s. Um, and uh, he did a very famous, very dull lecture, actually, in any other sense about uh, about that. And um, yes, uh, again, I'm I can't remember the exact dates. I, I, if I really, I really should reread my book. <laughs> 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 yeah. Because I, you know, they go out your head and you forget. So well, I should. Next it. time we do anything on time travel, I'm going to re reread my book so I know what I'm talking about. I mean, about. I, I, I could do a whole separate podcast on time yeah. travels. <laughs> to, to be honest with you, I really could. Um, what's your very favorite? Well, not very favorite. What's your What's your favorite story then of time travel? Is it Is it? Uh, or, or, or do you see? I was chatting today with this friend, and I said, I sort of think it's a pretty obvious one to say. I sort of think Back to the Future one. Is well, as perfect there's, there's as it lots gets. Of things. I, I I adore adore Back to the Future. I think it is. I do think it's just a, a near perfect script. Oh, it's complete, completely perfect script. I, I cannot. It's almost impossible to. It's a great story, mm -hmm. and you, you know the history that you know uh, that he came in late, did Marty, and um, mm. uh, and made the film work because you know the the previous guy they had uh, yeah, Eric Stoltz, was making yeah. it a different film, and it wasn't funny, and Marty yeah. came in and basically you know it may not and of course originally you probably know it was called the spaceman from pluto yeah not a great you know that one, one you know yes to do that producer i thought you would it. i yeah. thought you would I, I love all that stuff and and this do you know that you, you must know the spielberg story do you know the spielberg story of why it wasn't called that yes yes because yeah. he um you tell it i've talked too much you do no you do it because i can't actually remember <laughs> well <laughs> what, what happened was that the 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 the, the, the it, it, Back to the Future is, is the greatest title, really. It's a wonderful title. Yes. The producer at, at Paramount, is it Paramount? Picture I think Universal? it was, yes. Yeah, uh, Picture yeah. or Universal, I can't remember. Um, uh, they, uh, the guy said, you can't call it Back to the Future because it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Back to the Future, that, you know, no, the future's in the future. You, you know, you can't go back to the future. No, 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 no. Uh, no, Back to the Future, no, a terrible title. Uh, call it the spaceman from Pluto. Yeah. So, um, so Spielberg got this memo from the boss yes. saying your film, which is now called yep. Spaceman from Pluto, and Spielberg said, "What do we do with this?" Because, and Spielberg came up with this great idea. He said, "I know what we'll do. We'll we'll write a memo back to the producer saying, Ernie." Thank you so much for the title, Spaceman from Pluto. It gave us such a big laugh. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. knew you were joking. It's fabulous. Keep them coming. Yeah. You're an, a great guy, the funniest guy in the world. We laughed ourselves crazy. Best wishes, Steve. Yes. Um, and they never heard from him again. That's right. And that's, that's why right. it was called Back to the Future. That's right, that's right. <laughs> Um, so we are nearing the end. So Friday, what happened on Friday? Uh, I've got holes in my socks. Okay. Um, and because, you know, I, I, it might be just one sock. 
of the way my feet are made and the, it cuts a hole in them. So, and I, th- I suddenly found myself having to throw away socks as it's uncomfortable when, the, when your toe goes through the sock. Mm. But it was only one, I thought, well, this is ridiculous. I'm throwing away a sock. I, I hate throwing things away. And I've got these odd socks. I wear coloured socks because of COVID because I wanted to brighten my, the world up. So I've decided yeah. only to wear, ever wear coloured socks. So, today, for the very, very first time, um, which I wouldn't normally do, I have worn. I'd better switch them off and do it. But you get, you've probably got the punchline. I have got one blue sock and one purple. beautiful, right. beautiful. <laughs> I bet you got another so, pair like them, haven't you? Well, nowadays uh, it's fascinating. I've never done that before. I've never walked around in public with odd socks, and. All I noticed was people looking at my feet the whole day. Oh, well. You know. Oh, well. I, N. Rytel, who worked on Spitting Image, for no, for reasons, to, because it was a lovely guy, but bonkers, mm. he decided to buy a wig. He had a full set of hair. But he decided to buy a wig. And then he said, really interesting, because you then realise what people are looking at. Yeah. You're, you're, they don't look into your face. They look in your wig. Yeah. Uh, and And today, all people have done is look at my feet. So that's that's the most that's yeah. my day today. I think we're up to date now. That's I so mean that, I've, I've you say about N N Rytel. I've 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 heard things about him that he's he's quite eccentric. He's bonkers, is he? He's, he no, he's completely bonkers. Um, and uh, uh, as I say, he's absolutely lovely, but but bonkers. Now mm. before we go, yes, I'm just determined. To find the name of this philosopher who wrote this 70th birthday party thing. <laughs> um, time travel. Let's look it up. Time travel. Um, I think it was 70th birthday. <laughs> birthday. Einstein. <laughs> At... Um... At my work, when we get a new starter, they tend to do a little, who is this person, this new starter? And one of the questions they ask them, um, which gets printed in, well, not printed, they send out a a company-wide newsletter each Friday. And one of the questions they ask is, if you could go back to any period in time, what would you pick? And I've been so disappointed with the last three new starters, because they're all picking stuff like the 80s and 90s. Like, why are you... Doing that, that we mm. live through. That. I think I would. I, the problem with going back in time, I, I've always wanted to um, go back to the um, the Greeks. Yeah. Mm. Uh, the problem, of course, when you go back to the Greeks, is you might end up down the silver mines and dead within a week. Um, <laughs> yeah. So if you you know, so don't just go back um, in time. Be careful where you. Be careful that you're on the. You've got a bit of money, and you're not a slave. <laughs> I'd I'd probably avoid the 1500s or something like that. I'd just get burnt as a witch or something, if I go back to the. Well, I would get day. burnt as a. I would get burnt as a witch because I've got so many people in. I've got so many people inside um, of me. Possessed. Possessed. Fair enough. Oh, by the way, Sound mm-hmm. of Thunder, Ray Bradbury. Ray Bradbury, of course it go. was. I was doing of a bit of research. It was. Why, well, who really. else would it be? Yeah. Um, ah, I found it. Uh, Kurt Gödel. Kurt Gödel. Kurt Gödel. He was a, a, a an Austrian American logician, lo, lo, oh, yeah. logician. Ah. Uh, no, uh, logicanist. Whatever. I'm he not, gave. Um, he gave uh, the, the the present. Um, maybe it's not his seventieth birthday. Uh, Kurt Gödel, um, yeah, yeah. and he's a character. That comes up in book two, ah. so I, you know I, that's why I should have remembered it because he, he gets mentioned all quite a lot of uh, his theory of time travel um, okay. comes up in 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 um, and Kurt Gödel in my story is a swidger. Oh, okay. I made him into a swidger. He's nice. dead. He can't sue unless, of yeah. course, there is time travel and he comes back to now. <laughs> then that would prove it, wouldn't it? That'd be great. What a way to prove it. My um, so I'm glad I've uh, Ray Bradbury, of course. Who else would it be? Yes. So final plug. 
book. Yeah, um, I, was, I, was, I was about uh, to say, um, you you know, you... Uh, please write anything me, you want to plug? Read, read, <laughs> like, read on the internet. No, 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 nothing. You just have to read it uh, on the internet. If I've made mistakes, people, hello, um, <laughs> just write to me. My um, <laughs> My email is on the website. Just write to me. And with it being online, I can correct yeah. it. And if I've made mistakes, as I probably am, as I probably have, just just yeah, let me know. I mean, I, 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 I'm guilty of doing this very same thing just yesterday. Uh, there's a YouTube channel. I'm a big film fan, okay? So there's a YouTube channel that have BBFC uh, oh, yeah. black cards. It's just their YouTube channel. They just have them throughout the years, all the different types. And Terminator 2 Judgment Day came up. But they'd spelt Judgment Day, J U D G E M E N T. Now it's the American version. It it's the American version. There's a different there spelling, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah, and I basically commented, I, I hate to, there's no E in Judgment, and they went, well spotted. And then like, this video is from like a year ago, and then 45 like 45 seconds later, the new version appeared <laughs> on their channel, and I was like, oh, I am such an asshole. <laughs> no, no, I I'm um. Uh, we, we, we might as well get it right. Is the point? I know that's what I'm thinking, and you know it's we like, might as well get it right. right. And and I've mentioned so many films, um, and so many TV series, and so many books. Uh, I am sure I've made mistakes. Um, I can edit it sure. to make it sound right. I can edit well, it. I'm, I'm sure the Doctor Who fans who know the stuff better than I do um, will correct me when I'm wrong. Yeah, um, but. Um, it, it, it's you know it's a, 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 a sort of you, well as you see I'm I'm a bit of a nerd on time travel and uh, <laughs> you're, you're just nodding yes yeah, I see that I see you're a nerd on time travel yeah. um, um, yeah. uh, so I'm 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 happy to declare myself guilty on that oh, on that particular it. one no I love it I and love it. book two uh, will have proper time travel in it. So yeah, do uh, do buy the book. Uh, it is really really good, um, and um, so it's part of the Swidgers um, series. And it was called uh, yeah, that's it. I was trying to remember what it's called. I want to get it right. The time that never was, because yeah, there we are. The time that never was, because every time I've sort of written it down or said it, I ended up going that was the week that was. <laughs> ah yes, well, was, there, was incidentally, yeah. you you may think the time that never was. Is uh, 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 you know somehow there's a time loop and time hasn't gone on. It isn't quite what you think it means. Mm -hmm. um, at, right at the end of the book, it's revealed exactly what the time that never was is, and it's lost opportunities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's really about the second half of the book is is the lost opportunities of life, and that is the time that never was. Don't have lost opportunities in your life. It's also a Bruce Springsteen song. Yes, it is. And here's the thing. I I, I stayed up two nights worrying that I would get um, sued by Bruce Springsteen's Lots. lawyers. Um, and because, but actually, you, it's almost impossible to copyright a title. Yeah. And also, there were two songs previously to Bruce Springsteen called The Time That Never Was. One by a Danish group, I think, and, and so on. So there's, there's precedent previously. Yeah. I, well, I, I, that, legally. I googled it. <laughs> and then you googled that. Well, so did I, because I I, yeah. I got worried, and because um, I didn't know there was a song called "The Time That Never Was," but it's not on his hundred top list, so you know right. it's not associated with him in that sense. Um, more importantly, you cannot copyright a phrase that is no. in in relative usage. Yeah. What I discovered was you cannot call a book. Um, uh, you cannot call a book uh, Hello Darkness My Old Friend for example <laughs> Yes, because yeah. that is so close yeah, and yeah. I've just been reading uh, this book by David Lodge who was my tutor at university I sent the book to him incidentally he, he was a novelist very well known in the 80s um, and so I, I sent the book to him and he was my tutor at university and he wrote back and said I have no idea who you are <laughs> No. <laughs> I have never I don't remember you um, but he read the book and or he said he read the beginning of it he said um, this is good 
Uh, it is very promising. I'm afraid I'm not going to have time to read all of it, but you've got a great publisher. I wish you well. And uh, it, 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 what I've read, I am impressed by. So nice. from David Lodge. But um, he talks in this book, he, he, he wrote um, a book called The British Museum is Falling Down, and he wanted to call it The British Museum Has Lost Its Charm. Oh, but Gershwin, okay. George Gershwin, Ira Gershwin, yes. wrote a song, um, A Foggy Day in London Town. I think it's A Foggy Day in London Town. The, the British Museum has lost its charm, I think, oh. is one of the lines in it. And okay. the Gershwin estate wouldn't let him use wow. those words. But the time that never was is 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 the sort of thing that you can imagine anybody yeah. saying. Yeah. Well, that's the time that never was. It, and so it's, book two is called uh, Born in the USA as well. <laughs> <laughs> So book two is called The Day They Saved Tomorrow. That's that's a title. Yeah. The I Day mean, They Saved title, Tomorrow. And book three is called The Time of Yesterday's Return. Good day, God. And the, the public, I didn't want to call them any of these things, and the public, publisher got in touch with me and said, I think it would be a good idea since you're writing a series, and it's a series about time, if every book began with The Time. Yeah, yeah. So the time that never was, the time they saved tomorrow, the time of yesterday's return, uh, which is slightly clumsy. I just wanted to call it yet yeah, the day uh, yesterday's return. I think, uh, yeah. but but it, and I'm getting used to it now. The time of yesterday's return. So you can I see like it. where it's going. Yeah, time well, travel I like fans. It. I like it a lot. So yeah, do buy that book, uh, The Time That Never Was. It's really, really good. Mm -hmm. Um, so Steve, it's been an absolute two hours. <laughs> yeah. Has it does it feel like it's been five minutes? Have we time yeah, traveled? This, this this is actually the longest one I've recorded. I warned but... you. I warned you I did one last year. <laughs> but... but 45 minutes. Go on, there's yeah. a bot. Come on, there's a bot. It's a good thing. It's it's not it's not the longest time I've spoken to someone on 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 this thing. That's that's a record of two days. Oh wow! Um, <laughs> two evenings. It was two evenings. Oh, there right. yeah, it was there was one one evening was technical issues where nothing happened. Right, okay. Anyway, um, but yeah, no, it's it's been it's been incredibly entertaining and it has flown by and I've, I've loved talking to you. It's been um, good listening to you. Yeah, yeah. I want to I want to talk more time travel with you properly uh, at some point. So I think I probably should do. Well, that. let's do it. Let's do a special on time travel then. Yes, when that was the uh, the Taiwanese work that I was <laughs> we did it last week, but we went back in time and did it last yeah. week. So, so tell me, what are you doing next week? Uh, <laughs> well, yeah. yeah well, there, there's a note. I was brought up in a, a, a Jesuits, and the Jesuits had a, a great line when they said, "God laughs loudest when you talk about what you're going to do tomorrow." <laughs> I love that. So I, uh, I, I, you know, t tomorrow is another day, you know, uh, I, except Thora Heard, at, at, in my opinion, had an even better line. Oh, she on. said, if you believe that tomorrow could be the best day of your life, you'll never grow old. Oh, that's lovely, isn't it? That's a nice positive. Isn't it? Well, with that, I, I will I will end it. Um, Steve Nallen, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. You're you're a gent, and I love it. Emmy, anything to add? I haven't got anything to add. That's Wonderful, really nice chat, isn't it? Well, that was that was the week. That was was it. Goodbye. <laughs> Those guys. Space travel is so 2021. I really want to spend 200 grand experiencing microgravity and witnessing the curvature of the Earth when you can fucking time travel. Remember when you found out just a little bit too late that your flat was infested with sodding moths? Well, grab a ride with us here at New VX and we'll smash the shit out of the fabric of space time and create your own personal wormhole, transporting you back to the day you could kill off all those little bastard moth eggs, save your cashmere jumpers, and cure yourself of motophobia before you even knew that you had motophobia. Time travel with new VX. You don't even need to get into a hot tub for it, although we won't judge you if you'd rather. <laughs>